Hey, Bryce. What's up, Bryce? What's your name? All right. <clears throat> One second. We'll go ahead and get started now. Let me go ahead and screen share real quick. You we give enough uh, time for the viewers to get on or not? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, they're not going to miss a lot. Um, most of this is just basically setting up the template and stuff, which, which I believe everybody should be on for. So we'll see. Um, let me go ahead and send a message real quick then for... Because a lot of people are having trouble with their templates. So I want to make sure they get on. Yeah. yeah I saw that in the, in the chat earlier. I thought it was only like a really just a couple of people. But, I mean, I only checked very limited today in that in the group. <clears throat> Right. Um, Bryce, you mind typing in in the chat group? Um, just a reminder for any questions that anybody has, um, make sure to put it in the chat group. Yeah, I'll type that in real quick. See how many people we got on now. We need a few more people on. <laughs> this should be an easy lesson. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just gonna help people load their template and whatnot because a lot of people are having trouble. Go over risk management, um, going over ways to place trades, buy limits, sell limits, buy stop, sell stop, um, take profits, stop losses. Um, basically, what the indicator mean on the on the template, and um, I think that's about it. If we have a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and go over what we went through on Thursday, which is the exits off of um, M and W formations. So that's if we have time to, so we'll see. We will see. I want to make sure enough people are on, though. Okay, I'll go ahead and start now then. Um, all right, so for everybody, this is how you will be installing the template, okay? So I asked for everybody to download all the indicators um, and the template onto your computer, and the files are listed in the in the training page, the Facebook page. So if you guys downloaded those, um, I can go ahead and help you install them if you guys haven't done it yet. So what you're going to do is once you <clears throat> Once you finish downloading them, um, you need to know where those files are because you're going to have to go back to them. And I want you to highlight all of those indicators, not the template, just the indicators. I need you to highlight them and copy all of them. Okay? Make sure you highlight all of them. That way you can move them all at once. Hey, Danny, 
Is this the same yeah. for MacBook as it is for Windows? Yeah, it is. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, so for all yeah, all the all the steps that are listed here are the same um, for whatever program is on your computer. All right, so once you have copied it, I need you guys to open your broker account. Go to your MT4. And you guys will go to the top left where it says File. Once you click File, you'll see in the middle it says Open Data Folder. I need you guys to click that. Okay, and then something will pop up. Then you will select MQL4. After you open that folder, you will select Indicators. Okay, now you're going to see a, lift, a list of all the indicators that uh, the MT4 provides or whatever indicators you already have installed. Okay, so what I need you to do is right click on the right side where all the indicators are listed, right click until one of the options that pop up show paste. Okay, I need you to paste it. All right, once it's pasted, I need you to close that uh, close that pop-up folder or that pop-up window, and then I need you to close your broker account. Just exit. You don't need to log out. After you exit it, I need you to open it back up. How was that training, Brock? Good, good. And you're doing another one Wednesday, right? Yeah, we're doing another one Wednesday. Um, that one will be recorded, and it'll be on YouTube Live, and we'll be going over actual charts and live charting, and how to really go over support and resistance and everything like that, too. I wanted to do just basics, um, you know, very basic stuff tonight. So uh, Wednesday we'll get a little bit more in depth and kind of grow on what we learned tonight. Okay, okay, that's good. Hopefully everybody's catching up to it because I don't want any people left behind for that group. I hope everybody's actually gonna keep up to date for it. For sure, we're gonna do it the same kind of way every Monday and Wednesday. So um, Mondays will be very basic, and then Wednesdays. We'll start with live charting and going more in depth. So that way we kind of just cycle up. Uh, and then I lost the lost the link to the hang. Oh, got it here. All right, it looks like some people might be confused. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I think um, Dreezy, um, do you are you confused or what's going on? And Anna, that was lo que estás haciendo o no? Could she not see us or something, or see the screen? I, I'm not sure. That's what I'm confused about. Yeah. She said it's not clean, so I'm guessing she sees it as blurry. Do you guys see my screen as blurry? No. No, it looks clean to me. Okay. All right. Um, well, for those who um, who are waiting to open their broker account back up, 
go ahead and um, open up any pair any pair just open up a new chart window and I hope you guys know how to do that but open up a new chart window if you don't know how to do that just go ahead and ask um, on the messenger you do that you're gonna right click go to load template and then you're gonna go to the template you guys downloaded from the files okay wherever you guys have it located on under your files just go to it double click on it and then after that you guys should be all set to go it should look it should look good um, for those that are that did it I want you to go ahead and um, post your results uh, just take a quick screenshot or take a picture of your laptop real quick and post it on the messenger just to make sure that it looks right. Yana, me dice si si lo podías hacer. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, if you guys want me to go back, just go ahead and uh, and let me know. But Drizzy took a snapshot of it, so you guys should have it there. Okay. So now for those that did, were able to set up the template, hopefully all, all of you were. Um, these are what the indicators mean. Okay, what you're looking at your charts. When you're looking at your charts, you're going to see three different colored boxes. Um, from left to right, okay. The first box, you can. By the way, go to the 15 minute time frame because you guys are gonna see it more clearly based off the 15 minute. All right. So the first box you guys are gonna see is a light blue box. That's the Asian session, okay. And these are all Pacific time, okay. 5:30 to midnight. Now the middle one, the peach looking one, is London session. That's from 12.30 to 6 o'clock in the morning. Once again, that's specific time. For Eastern time, that's just put three hours ahead. Now the maroon colored one is New York session. Okay. Now, whatever isn't colored, there's no session on um, based off of the market maker method. Okay, there's other methods, you know, Sydney and different other sessions going on. But based off the market maker method, these are the only sessions you should be focusing focusing on. Um, basically, these these are the only sessions that exist to you. Okay, so do, those are what the three colored boxes mean. All right, so it makes it a lot easier for you guys to determine uh, what session you guys are in. Now, between these sessions, you will find two candles, okay? On the 15-minute chart, you will find two candles in between each session. Now, they're inside a gray box, a long gray box, okay? What these two candles are, they are located between the gap times in the gap times between the sessions, okay? No session overlaps another. There is there is basically a break time, a gap time between each session. Each one is 30 minutes long, okay? Except for, okay, except for dead gap. On my first training, I showed dead gap. If you guys don't know it, go ahead and watch my first video. I show all the times there and dead gap period. Dead gap is from 2 o'clock after New York closes, 2 o'clock, all the way up to uh, 5.30 when Asia opens. Okay? Now, 30-minute gap between each session. All right, from Asia to London, there's a 30-minute gap. 
London to New York, 30 minute gap, and after that it's just dead gap. Alright, so I hope you guys got all that down. On to the next slide. Okay, now another indicator you guys are going to see. It's a light blue dashed line. That light blue dashed line you guys are going to see um, right on top of it when the new day starts. You're going to see it says day high or day low. Now one second. D, that's not how it's supposed to look like. Um, hmm. It's still black. Right click on your charts, D. Right click on, on that pair chart and go to load template. That's a nice W formation on that chart, too. Uh, yeah, go to that. Go to that uh, right click and then load template. Go to where you have the template. You, uh, you have to have it downloaded before you're able to go to it. So if you have it downloaded, go to where you have the template. Then I need you to double click on it. Once you double click on it, it'll automatically open up to that chart. I want you to try it and let me know if it works or not. All right. So like I was saying, the dashed lines, they have day high and day low. Okay, and what it is is basically on your current day, the current day that the charts are on, it's going to show a day high and day low. But those are from the previous day, the previous day highs and day low, okay? So don't think that it's already predicting what today's high is going to be and today's low. No, that's the previous days. All right, now... There are two shadow boxes above and below the London box. Okay, that's the peach one. You will ignore those. Okay, I tried taking them off of the template, but I had no idea how to do it. So just ignore them. They don't mean anything whatsoever. And I'm not going to train anything about it. But to us, they don't mean anything. And if anybody can figure out how to take those down, then I'll give you props for it. I'll give you a shout out. Now the EMAs, the EMAs are the the lines you see in the middle of your charts. One second. All right, so it looks like lines just in the middle of your charts, okay? There's going to be a light blue one, a white one, and a uh, dark blue one, okay? Now, these have nicknames, and we need to code them by their nicknames. That's the language we're going to be speaking now, okay? So the light blue one, you are going to call it the water because it looks like water. It looks like the ocean, okay? So you're going to call it water. The white one is going to be mayo because mayo is white and the blue one is blueberry. It's easy, simple. You guys can remember that. All right, so those are the code names you guys are going to use for those. And from now on, I want you guys to remember it so we can, that's how we're going to talk, okay? And later on, uh, hopefully next week, I'll teach you what they are used for. All right, now. The values of the EMAs, 50, 200, and 800. But if you hover over it with your mouse, you'll be able to see the value of it as well. Okay? On to the next slide. Okay, now, these are, um, when you place, or right before you place a trade, you are basically asked what kind of trade is it going to be. Okay? Um, so market execution, you basically buy now or sell now. 
Okay, but when you go to a pending order, you're asked what kind of pending order. Is it going to be a buy stop, a sell stop, a buy limit, sell limit? So you place one of those. Now, some of you may be confused as to what they mean. Okay, now a buy stop. What a buy stop is, is you place the pending order above the price and you believe the price is going to keep going up after that um, after it hits that pending order okay so let's say a W formation forms <clears throat> you place a buy stop okay above where you believe price is going to go so it's going to hit that buy stop and it's going to keep going up that's how you win that trade it has to keep going up if you place a buy stop all right, now sell, sell stop is just the exact opposite. If you believe it's going to go down, you put a sell stop. Once it hits it, it opens a trade, and the market must keep going down for you to be able to profit off that trade. Now a buy limit. Buy limit is a little different. Okay, so instead of placing your um, pending order above where you believe that the price is going to go, um after it forms like a W formation. Okay, so if the price if the the market is formed the first leg and you believe it's gonna come back down to form a second leg, what you do is you place a buy limit. You place a buy limit at the price of the first leg. Okay, because you believe it's gonna come down and retest that first leg. And once the market comes to that price point where you have the pending order it will activate it okay now after it act activates it you expect a W to do what a W does after it retests the first leg you expect it to go up okay so that's a buy limit sell limit exact opposite one second Okay, sell limit exact opposite. Okay, I hope you guys understand that. If not, hey, Danny, yeah. um, can you you can place a buy stop and a sell stop if you're trying to like hedge, right? You can place both of them on the same trade, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, that's what I was trying to do with oil um last Monday when it had that gap. Mm -hmm. I was trying to I was trying to hedge that. Right. So I place both buy stop and sell stop with stop losses and take profits on both of them. Did you did you actually try it? Yeah, I did it and it worked. And I actually oh. made some pips off of that. Nice. That's good. This is there was actually a discussion to use that for NFP. Or yeah. NFP every yeah, I like that. It'll be good if that way you kinda of limit your risks too, you know what I mean? And um, you exactly. can kind of trap the market maker to, you know, it's either going to go up or down, and you kind of got it trapped. Exactly. Yeah. The only the only issue is um, where to set your take profit because it could just activate it and just drop the other way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. On to the next slide. If anybody has any questions about this one, you can go ahead and ask. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about spread, stop loss, and take profit. Now the spread. The spread of a pair is the difference in pips between the ask and the buy price. Okay. Now to sell, there's a different market price compared to buying. All right, now you just take the difference between those two and you have your spread. Now this is why many people place a trade and they go into the negative uh, once, once they place the trade. Okay, the reason why they go into the negative is because of the spread. 
All right, so if the spread is one pip, then you and you place a um, one cent lot, you're going to go into the negative, negative 10 cents. Okay, that's how you start off. One second. All right. <clears throat> All right, so that's that's what a spread is. Now the spread is also the commission the broker gets paid. Okay, the broker decides the spread. All right, so they can either decide to make the spread larger or smaller. It all depends on them. Okay, some brokers don't even have any spreads. All right, so that's their commission. Whatever the spread is, that's how much they're going to make off of your trade. Now the take profit. Take profit is if you believe the market is going to go up to a certain price or down to a certain price, you place your take profit there. Okay, so that when the market hits that price on your trade, your trade would automatically close. That way you don't have to manually close it yourself. Now, stop loss is the opposite of that. Okay, let's say you place a trade. You place a trade. You place it for a buy off of second leg W. You will place a stop loss below that W, below the second leg. Okay, because what you're doing is basically that's going to be your safety net. If the market comes back down and retests for a third hit. You want your stop loss to be there so you won't lose more money than you want or more money than you can. Okay? The stop loss is your safety net. Now, I'm teaching you guys a stop loss just for knowledge, just so you know, just in case someone asks you and you have an answer. Okay? I don't recommend using a stop loss. I don't. The reason why is because your broker can see your stop loss. That market makers can see your stop loss. Okay, if they see your stop loss, they can go back and just hit your stop loss, take your money, and then go back up the way you wanted it to. And that's exactly why I recommend not to use a stop loss. <clears throat> but um, for small, um, for for people that are uh, beginners and are trading like more than three, four uh, different pairs, then yes, uh, use a stop loss because it, it'll be difficult to manage all the trades at once. Okay. All right. Hope everybody has this down. On to the next slide. If you have any questions, go ahead and post it on the messages. All right. Now we're going to go over risk management. Okay, so these are the account sizes. One second. Okay. Un momento, Anna. All right, let me go back. Let me just answer this one question. Sabes que Anna te lo voy a explicar en los uh, mensajes, okay? Cuando terminamos aquí. Porque. Um, Va a ser más fácil nomás explicarte, explicártelo a ti. ¿Está bien? All right, so risk management. All right, so these are the recommended lot sizes for each account size. So if you are starting off with $10 all the way up to $75, I recommend one lot size, one penny lot size, okay? Now you can start with $10 with Trader's Way. Many other companies, they don't allow you to, all right? But for, but because I don't know what uh, broker you guys have, I'm putting it down to the lowest that I know as far, all right? So 
penny lot size. Now, if you have an account with seventy-five dollars to one twenty-five, max two cent lot sizes. Okay. Now, these are with all leverages. Okay, that's one thing I forgot to put on the slides. Actually, is leverage. Um, I'll go ahead and type that down for you guys real quick after. Um, so this, these lot sizes go with all leverages. It doesn't matter what leverage you have, um, as long as you don't have like one to fifty. As long as you have over to one one fifty, you guys will be fine. Okay. Um, but these are the recommended lot sizes. You will be able to place multiple trades based on these lot sizes in that account and that's the reason why I place these lot sizes for that so you guys can trade more than one pair and still be fine okay now keep in mind for each one of these for whatever account size you have the max you want to risk is five percent five percent of your account so for each trade you put on a one hundred dollar account you will risk only five dollars okay so if your trade goes to the negative five dollars you close your trade out you'll get a better trade on the next one okay just make sure you guys use risk management it's basically the most important thing other than psychological trading, okay? This is actually included in psychological trading because this is part of your emotions when trading. You get greedy, you get emotional, you want to keep the trading longer because you think it's going to go your way. But no, just quit at 5% and wait for a new setup to come, grab your money back and more. Simple as that, okay? Oh, oh, yeah, she's in good for pointing that out. Uh, one second. Okay. You mentioned this. I'm in a mistake here. It should be 0 0.04, not 0 0.40. I don't want you taking those lot sizes with that account. My mistake. All right. Thanks for pointing that out. I wouldn't have noticed it. All right, on to the next slide, okay? Now, the point here is to get to standard lot sizes. Once we're there, we can basically quit our jobs and just do this full time. We'll be able to make it easy 200 bucks a day, okay? That's the goal. I guess those are all the slides. That was pretty, pretty quick. Just to have another. 25 minutes. Okay. So, leverage. Uh, the recommended leverage that I would use would be a minimum of 1 to 200. I would not use any less. The reason why is because you want to make you want to make money, right? And with the lot size in an account that I just um, did a did a recommendation on, you will only really be able to make money with one to two hundred leverage and above. Okay, there's one to two hundred, one to five hundred, one to one thousand. I'm not sure if there's any in between, but I know my broker doesn't allow, uh, doesn't offer anything uh, in between those numbers. But one to two hundred and above. Okay, that would be using risk management and it'll be a good way to start off um, so what leverage is is basically it limits how much heat your account can take off a trade okay so if you have a, a balance of a hundred dollars on your broker account your um, trades will close out automatically if your leverage begins to be um, gets close to its maximum um, capacity basically 
kind of like it. Okay, so if you have a one to two hundred leverage and you have a hundred dollar account, okay, off of let's see, off of one trade, the maximum your account will let you lose would be, I believe it's twenty dollars or twenty five dollars. I'm not sure how to calculate that, but somewhere around that area. Just in case you fall asleep or something, your account, your your trade closes by itself. It won't let you exceed that. So it's basically like a stop loss, but that your broker provides. Yeah, Trader's Way has one to five hundred. Bryce, does Trader's Way not have one to two hundred? Um, yeah. Traders Play has one to two hundred. I just made a, another account. I just put one to two hundred actually a few hours ago. Jersey, oh, I guess they do they do have one to two hundred. Um They have everything, one to one or one to fifty, one to one hundred, one to two hundred, one to one or one to five hundred and one to a thousand. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, I just checked actually, I just logged into my Traders Way account and he's right. What I, I don't even know that. Okay. Yeah, so Jersey, you shouldn't have a problem changing your leverage on that. It should give you an option of one of the 200. I believe all of us use a uh, trader's way here. So um, see if you can change that. If not, then go ahead and contact your broker and ask them why uh, they don't offer that on your account. But they, it, it should be there. You should be able to go to your account and... Um, and change it yourself. You wouldn't have to ask the broker to change it for you. All right. So that's what leverage is. If anybody has any confusion about that, go ahead and post it. Wow. Exit doesn't show one to two hundred. It shows one to one hundred and one to three hundred. Oh really? Is yeah, it because Canada? That's, <laughs> on an ECN account. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I would recommend just go ahead and use one at 300. Um, you shouldn't, yeah, you'll be fine one at 300. You just click on one at 300 and then you click save or something. Something like that. Yeah, it should automatically do it for you, bro. It's easy. Okay, yeah, or it'll automatically do it for you. So where can I find a legend? So where can I find a legend for this moral template? What do you mean a legend? Does this only work on MT4? Does what only work on MT4? Are you talking about the template, or are you talking about the? Uh, yeah, are you talking about the template? Uh, the template? No, uh, actually. Um, yeah, it only works on um, MT4. It doesn't work on any other platform. <coughs> and Travis, what do you mean by your question? Okay. So I hope everybody got that down. If you have any questions, go ahead and interrupt me, okay? So, guys, do you think that's that's about it? Do you guys think I've covered everything on um, setting it up and risk management, explaining MT4? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. man. Uh, unless, um, do you think everyone knows how to properly set up their brokerage accounts. Now that I, it comes oh, okay. comes uh -huh. to mind, maybe some people I don't know. Um. So. Okay. It, depending on what broker you guys choose, honestly, the the preferred broker I recommend. Um. As for many other people, is Traders Way. The reason why is because they are one of the biggest broker companies in the world so they won't scam I don't believe they will actually put in the effort to scam people when they make a lot of money themselves with the amount of um, popularity they have okay 
there's a I'm pretty sure there's a lot of traders that are losing their money um, and traders way is getting all of that so that's uh that's one thing I'm gonna do too when I go to the Orlando world money show I'm gonna focus yeah. and uh, have some questions about the brokerage or the Forex brokers because there's gonna be a lot of currency traders there too so I'll find out what oh. brokers are the big guys using? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are are they from around the world or just in the country? It's around the world. Like Steve Forbes, and it's like tons of tons of investors. It's like a four day seminar, bro. Nice. Wow. I wish I was in Orlando. Right yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely live stream and record as much as I can for you guys. Awesome. Oh, that'll be great, man. Awesome. I already know which is the best broker in the whole world, but uh, unfortunately, U.S. Um, can't use it. They're based out of Switzerland. They have a crazy leverage amount. Like you, <laughs> the stuff that that brokerage lets you do is ridiculous, from what I heard. But you would have to like have a fake address and stuff to even be able to use their their um, business. So fortunately, no no one from the U.S. could do it. But I think people from Canada can utilize this brokerage account. <clears throat> so it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I don't blame them. The U.S. is like the biggest country that's in debt. Yeah, and plus our well, it's mostly our laws, man. Our laws are so hard on a lot of other countries that they don't even want to have us as clients, and it's definitely true. <laughs> All right. Well. I think that's about it that I've covered so far. Um, oh, yeah. You know what? You, you know what um, you should add? I've been seeing this going around Facebook just in uh, general for certain groups. Explained, um, I think we should have a brief section of ex explaining why ECN accounts are the better accounts uh, versus, you know, the, the other selections you get. And it's obvious for us why we choose ECN, but a lot of people... Beginners don't understand the concept of like what what's the the true difference <clears throat> and the ECN account. Okay. Well, all right. Well, the ECN account. You can see the options here. There's uh, many people um, were asking questions on which one is better um, out of the three options that you have for traders right here. Okay. You guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So you have a fixed. This is a, is it, yeah, it's variable. And mm -hmm. there's ECN, okay? Now, ECN, I believe, is the best one because it spreads, as you can see, zero pips. But I don't believe it's all zero pips, right? There's some that vary from. The exotic um, pairs are a little more. Yeah, definitely. Like Euro CAD's always like two pip spread. Like Euro Aussie, uh, always about so a two, two pip spread stuff. Like okay. That. Yeah. So ECN, you'll find uh, the smallest spreads. Okay. Um, that's good because you start off in the negative, um, a lot smaller. So you'll be able to place a little bit lot sizes, uh, higher lot sizes, um, for scalp trades or anything like that. Um, so I would recommend ECN overall out of all the other accounts they offer. Now the other ones, you do require, um, they do require less of a deposit, but once again, the pips are higher. I mean, the spreads are higher. Okay, ECN, uh, minimum deposit is 100 as it says right here. Okay, so um, all of them are the minimum lot size you can place is one cent lot size, so that's completely fine. Um, but overall, I recommend opening up an ECN account. It's the same as opening up any other account, except you just choose ECN, okay? Um, once again, the minimum deposit is $100. The other ones, you're able to deposit a minimum of $10. Right here, it says $2, but I don't believe you can actually do $2. It's $10, right? Yeah, it should be. I think, I don't know why they don't update that, because, I mean... If you look at their pip spread, you would you would lose that two bucks. <laughs> Just yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't make that any is sense. true. 
That is true. Yeah, yeah, that is it. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so I recommend ECN if you're going to go with Traders, right? <laughs> Once again, that's my current recommended broker. Um, I used to use TalonX, but then I met Traders Way, and I found Traders Way to be a lot, a lot better. And customer service is definitely a lot nicer too. Um, I think that's that's about it, right? Brokers and uh, yeah, if they if they uh, want, um, uh, you can. For anyone that wants to know of different brokerage companies, they can individually message me, and I can give them a list of uh, okay. other selections if they would like that. From their country and whatnot. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, just go ahead. If you guys have any um, broker questions or anything like that, go ahead and message Bryce Pierce. Okay, he'll go ahead and um, he'll um, explain to you. In the in the messages, what exactly he can help you with um, in regards to uh, picking a broker and what other brokers are options as well. So he'll he'll expose himself right now after this training just to let you guys know. Okay, so that's about it. We have ten minutes left. So um, Brock, do you think I missed anything or also? No, bro. I mean, pretty set. All right, sounds good. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at these charts real quick. And I'll come back to what I left off to the other day. Okay, so I, I don't have any more PowerPoints. I'll be uploading this PowerPoint for those that missed it um, before the next webinar, which is on Thursday. Okay, so let's take a look at these. So what I was explaining, was trying to explain were exits. Exits for a trade, okay? You guys already know entries. Okay, but one thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and go over entries again, just so you can refresh m your mind really quick. All right, let's let's keep it on the day chart. Okay, so <clears throat> let me look for a nice setup. I'll go all the way back here. I'm going to choose the right pair. I should just go to your USD. Okay. Alright. One second. Alright. So, let's see what we have here. Okay, here's a good one. All right. All right, so here we have a W formation. Okay. Well, the first leg here came up. Okay. Now you can see that it did drop again, but it didn't retest the low. Okay. So originally, what you should have done as you see this is the peak formation low you draw a line right here below the lowest body okay that's what you're supposed to do when you recognize your um, peak formation low now if you actually zoom in here you can actually see the best confirmation you could ever see on a trade and that is three hits to the low Okay, so we have no. There's already a line. Okay, we have three hits to lower right here. It came down once. Okay, came back up. Came down and hit the same price point, but didn't break it. Came back up and look at this long wick that decided to come all the way back down to retest that price, but didn't. Okay, you would take your entry off of this one here, off of the third hit. Okay, now. If you look at the bigger chart, if you look at the bigger chart, <clears throat> here's a W formation. Okay. Came back up, came back down, and retested that price point. Over here in the middle, it didn't come down to that price point, so it does not count. 
Remember, it has to hit the price. If it doesn't, it's not valid. All right. So it came back down, hit the price point, but did not break it. Remember, the second leg of the body has to close. If it's a W formation, it has to close above the first leg in order for it to be confirmed. The body cannot close below. Okay, so it hit, but it did not break the first leg. Your entry would be this second candle right here. Okay. Now, let's talk about exits. All right, so you see where this, oh, and another thing that I need to point out. Remember, there's a quick pullback, quick pullback off the second leg to trap trader short. Engulfing candle right here. Okay, perfect. It's a perfect setup. And that's what I want you guys to catch. So this next green candle would be your entry, okay? So you would, as soon as this, day candle close over here you would take entry alright now let's talk about exits you would exit based off the first leg where traders got trapped off the first leg okay so over here here's the first leg now you would look for where traders got trapped traders got trapped up here why? Because it came up, it wicked, stop, it stop hunted, hit stop losses up here, and came back down. It induced long trades. This is the day chart. So it induced long trades for two days, and then it dropped and it trapped traders. Okay, here's another one. It induced long trades for one day, dropped. Okay, here's another one. Traders got trapped here too. Traders got trapped right here. Okay, now you see, I'm guessing you guys get the get the point. All right, now I showed you guys all the places where traders got trapped. Now I'm going to show you guys the exit. All right, you take your entry off the second candle. Okay, so once you take your entry, what you're going to do is you are going to look for your first exit the first time traders got trapped on the way up not on the way down so you're not gonna exit up here where traders got trapped on the way down off the first leg you're gonna do it on the way up okay so where did traders get trapped on the first leg on the way up the first time after this second candle has formed is over here okay in this line right here all right that's your exit. Now remember, this is the day chart, so the pips are much more. So you would take entry right here when the candle opened. Now we're going to measure how many pips that is. 126 pips in a day. It moved 230, but you're going to grab half of those. You're going to grab half of them because your exit, your take profit, would be at this price where traders got trapped. Okay, so that's one example. Hoping you guys understand. If you guys don't, go ahead and ask the question. What you guys don't understand, or if you guys want me to repeat the same one, I'll go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to go look for a different setup. Okay, now let's check out this M formation up here. Let's, let's see what it has for us. Okay, draw a line here. Did it break the first leg? No, it did not. It wicked it, but it did not break it. Body did not close above the first leg, so it makes it a valid formation, okay? All right, so look at this long candle. Wicked it. Grabbed a lot of orders, um, making people buy again. Then it dropped. It's a very big move, especially off the day, day chart, okay? Now, you would enter off this, off the second candle. Now, although... It did leave this long wick here. That's where risk management comes to play. Okay. You would have been 84 pips into the negative. But remember, you use risk management and you take your losses and look for a better setup. This doesn't always happen, but when it does, you have to make sure you're prepared for it. Okay. It doesn't always look pretty. All right. Now, another thing that's wrong with this picture is look. 
if you take a look at the second leg, is this candle right here engulfing the previous one? No, it's not. That's one small little difference. And that small little difference right there, although this is a valid 4M formation because it didn't break the first leg, it didn't form an engulfing candle, which means it didn't pull back quickly enough to trap traders, which means that they're going to go back up to trap the traders because this candle isn't engulfing, which means they didn't trap the traders here. Okay, second leg, they have to trap traders. This is where they want to trap the traders off the next candle. That's what you have to look for an engulfing candle off of a uh, valid M formation. Okay, now look for the exit on here. All right, now we're going to look at the first leg. We're going to look to see where traders got trapped. Let's start from down up. So, traders got trapped down here. I'm going to close this previous one. All right, traders got trapped down here. Traders got trapped right here. They faked them short, went long. Traders got trapped right here. They faked them short, went long. Traders got trapped right here. They faked them short, went long. Okay. Now, these are your potential exit points. Okay, so remember before on the W formation, I said on a W, on the first, first leg, you look from down up where traders got trapped to look for your entry. With the AM formation, what do you expect? You expect the opposite. You look up, down for your potential exit. Okay, so you're going to start from here. You're going to look down. Traded The first time traders got trapped on the way down is right here. This is your exit. Okay, if you have multiple um, trades open, if you have two trades open, okay, you take both of them here. If you have three trades open, you take all three of them here. You always take the first take profit, period, because it, from here, it could reverse back up. All right, it's better to be a safe trader and a smart trader than a risky trader. You want to take home profit. That's the whole point. You want to build your account so that way you can place higher lot sizes and not have to go all the way down here. Okay? You can easily grab 10 pips with a standard lot and you'll make $100. Easy. With just 10 pips and a standard lot, $100. Okay? This is what you want here. You want a safe and smart trade. This itself. If you were to take entry off the second candle, that's 170 pips. I'm sure you guys are okay with 170 pips. All right, 170 pips is a good amount, okay? It's a really good amount. So you guys should be happy with that. Remember, exits are placed where traders got trapped. So you place the line where traders got trapped. Traders um, shorted here, but look, it reversed back up. Okay, trader shorted here, but he reversed back up. Trader shorted here, reversed back up. Trader shorted here. This is consolidation period. Remember, consolidation period. What happens? Market makers are collecting contracts. One second. Someone has a question. Are these exits legit? As in, we could always count on the first line where traders got trapped to be our exit point. Yes, it is. It's legit. The reason why is because when you, when the traders are trapped here, it acts as support. So if the M formation is valid, that's resistance. The first leg would be resistance. So it has to bounce from re resistance to support. Otherwise, nothing is going to push it back up. Something's going to have to push it back up eventually because the market goes up and down. It doesn't just go one way. Okay, so these exits are legit. You can count on these exit exits every single time. Now, sometimes on lower time frames, on the 15, you're not going to be able to catch as many pips. The lower the time frame, the less pips you're going to catch. So off the 15 minute, I mean, if you catch four pips because the where traders got trapped is only four pips away from your entry, okay, then it's four pips, but it's still profit, okay? You guys 
have to um, you guys will have to learn um, unfortunately the hard way you guys see a lot of people making thousands of dollars a day that's not going to be you right now right now what you're going to do you're going to build your account and eventually you'll be able to have your thousand dollar days hundred dollar days whatever your your goal is okay but we're going to build your account and then you'll be able to uh, profit off of the four pip um, four pip trades okay all right so these are all valid entry points now I'm showing you guys this like live I I just look for these setups right now it's not like I looked for these setups right before the right before the webinar no this I'm just looking for setups right now and I'm looking for the ex exits last minute okay so I'll show you guys one more and then we'll go ahead and head out alright now I'll do it off the 15 minute just because I know many people are used to trading off the 15 alright so let's look for a valid formation now this wouldn't be a valid formation why because the second leg broke the first okay so let's look for a valid one okay this is pretty valid right here one second okay let me change to a different chart so you guys can see it clear none of these boxes might be in the way it's gonna look bright hold on okay Okay, off the 15 minute. All right, valid W formation. You have a drop. Okay, let me change that color. Okay, drop. Formation of the first leg. It rose. Okay, then it dropped. Made the second leg rolls back up okay that's a W formation you guys see it okay good I'm gonna delete the W now we just can see see it in a lot clearer alright so let's check did the second leg break the first leg oh my god no it didn't it wicked it but it did not close below the first leg that makes it a valid formation now you wait for this 15 minute candle to close to validate that is it is going to be a W formation. Okay. Now let's zoom in more. No, no, this is too close. Okay. W formation. First first candle off the second leg confirms that it's a W after it closes. So you take entry. You take entry right here off the second candle. Now let's mark up the exits. Starting from up down, okay. Traders got trapped here. Traders didn't get trapped. Traders didn't get trapped. Traders got trapped right here. Traders actually got trapped right here too, because as you can see, the market is moving sideways for a second. Trapped them long with this wick. Dropped. Market is moving sideways for a second. Dropped. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay, and traders got trapped right here. Okay. They thought it was going long because they moved this wick so fast that people started to panic. Oh my god, it's going to be a buy. I was wrong. It's not a sell. No, it's a sell still. They just trapped them for a buy. Okay, then it dropped again. Traders got trapped right there. Went long, dropped again. Okay, now there's too many lines there, so I'm going to go ahead and delete some. All right. Um, so what I what did I tell you for W formations? You look down up. You exit. Okay. You would take your entry off of this candle right there, that blue one. That's your entry right at the bottom. Now remember, I told you with smaller smaller time frames, it's not a lot of pips. Okay. So where where's your first exit? This red line right here, where traders got trapped. How many pips is that? That right there is seven, seven pips, 7.8 to be exact, okay? That's not a lot compared to the day chart, but they are still pips. That's the exit. Now, I just drew this right in front of you. I just saw a W formation. I decided I'll teach you guys this. 
I'll tell you what the exits are for this one. Show me any W, valid W, or M formation, and I will tell you where the exits are, okay? Now, another confirmation is here, engulfing candle. Okay, you count the wick. You count the wick. Now, the wick plus the body of this candle is a lot larger than this red candle right here. So that's an engulfing candle, okay? You include the wick, all right? You take your entry here. Put your take profit, bam, you got your pips, all right? So that's pretty much it for the exits. I really hope you guys understood it this time. I'm going to go over it again on Thursday just because I really want you guys to, uh, to get this, okay? It's very vital that you guys get your exits right. Entry, the, the entries are great, but the exits are more important because most people, they get greedy when they put an entry. And I don't want that for us, okay? You guys have to trade smart, trade like the market makers, okay? This is the market maker method. So this is, I believe, one of the best methods out there, all right? So you have to trade like if you are trading off the best method out there, all right? Trade smart. And I will be catching you guys on Thursday. That's it for the webinar today. Um, once again, I'll be going over exits again. And I will be going over support and resistance. Okay, that's going to be for next week. All right, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. Bryce is going to go ahead and, um, and put his information down um, in regards to what he can help you guys with in regards to brokers. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and post his message after the webinar. So if you guys have any questions at all about brokers and which ones he might recommend, he has a lot of information he could share with you guys that I'm sure will help you guys a lot. So whatever your country you're from, hit him up, okay, message him, and he'll help you out. I appreciate you guys for uh, showing up, and I will be catching you guys on Thursday, okay? You guys have a good night.